This is The Hustler's Corner. I'm quite excited because we're recording the first episode for 2022. It's been quite an interesting journey. Lots of episodes have grown. I think lockdown has really forced a lot of people to go online. And I'd like to say to all of our new subscribers, to everybody that is here, we appreciate you. We thank you and we welcome you to 2022 and the first episode of 2022 of the Hustlers Corner. You're more than welcome, guys. Now, I'm excited today because I'm sitting with somebody who is, I call them my tribe. He's not only my tribe as an entrepreneur, but he's my tribe in the cryptocurrency space. Now, this is one of the first people that tried to introduce, not let me not say he tried, he introduced cryptocurrency to me a couple of years ago. But at the time, I was still skeptical. I did not want to hear of anything that has to do with things I did not understand. And, and I'm sure just like a whole lot of other people out there, you know, when you hear Forex trading or you hear crypto, sometimes we, we receive the information differently. But I eventually, as a late bloomer, got into crypto. But I always have to give this guy his props that he deserves. That he's actually the first person that introduced me to it uh, many years ago. He's been in that space for a couple of years. But let's not talk about crypto yet because it's something we'll talk about later. He's an entrepreneur, somebody from the Eastern Cape. Came to Joburg like everybody chasing his dream. He's been in the real estate industry. He's an entrepreneur. He's tried things. Some things didn't work. He's done things. He has worked for somebody before. He's had a boss before. But uh, I think what brings us together is just this like-mindedness. As entrepreneurs, we want to build our own vision. We've got a vision for our community, for our family, for our young people in the country. And we would like to see it get somewhere. We would like to see it materialize. And we're one of those people that just don't want to sit back and always blame, 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 and complain, 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 which is good. You must always hold your government to account. Always hold them accountable, your politicians. But you must not be waiting at the same time. You got to be doing things on the side. You got to be hustling. You got to be getting um, things started. You got to be moving, meeting people, networking, building your brand, or whatever it might be that you guys are doing out there. This person is the same or similar, just like how, how I am as a hustler, just like how you are out there as hustlers. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome to the Hustlers Corner for the first time in 2022, Mr. Lonoabo Fololo. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks, thanks. Thanks a lot for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Chef Gujan, I'm great, Ganja. No, I'm blessed, man. You know, the first thing I want to ask you is, um, when I eventually started getting into crypto, I obviously did not tell you, but I'm sure you might have started seeing it on my social media platforms because we follow each other. What was the first thing on your mind where you were like, ah, this one, I've been telling you, finally, <laughs> but what did you think? So I felt exactly like that, you know, that, uh, you know, yeah, I told him, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, but, uh, you know, the, the, the beautiful thing is that, you know, over the years, you know, I'm kind of used to that now because... I mean, when we started, you know, this was like literally, you know, new in South Africa. Very few people, um, you know, knew about cryptocurrencies and so forth. Uh, but I always knew, we always knew that this is the future, right? People sooner or later will get to realize what this thing is about, where it's going, and they would want to get involved. Yeah. So, so I wasn't surprised. So <laughs> yeah. I always say to the guys, you know, whenever you talk to someone and they say, ah, I'm not really interested in those things, you know, those things are scams, whatever the case is. Um, I always say that, you know, uh, a, a no, it's not actually a no, it's a not now. Mm. It's a matter of time, you know, that person is going to turn the corner and realize the potential of crypto. I'm actually excited that we are here and I'm actually excited at the, the speed at which the cryptocurrency community is growing in South Africa. But what excites me even more is the gospel that we've all lived and we've been preaching over the years the gospel of entrepreneurship i'm so excited and glad that now the voices are getting louder and louder that are preaching entrepreneurship that are preaching us being independent building our own things supporting one another i'm starting to hear that conversation become louder mm -hmm. this is me um being happy of that entrepreneurship culture in south africa the growth of it where we are but this is also me being happy with the growth of the cryptocurrency culture in south africa and where we are but i still think we, as much as i'm a late bloomer we're mm. still at the beginning in south africa True. before we get into entrepreneurship and cryptocurrency and all these things at some point you were a little boy maybe let's start from there i'm not going to do much talking i'll leave it to you i'd like for you to tell us your story who is lonoabo for lolo yeah so um i grew up in port elizabeth um i stayed um, you know, my mom, uh, 
No, New no. Brighton. In, in, uh, actually, I was born in New Brighton. Okay. But we moved to Motherwell. Oh, I know Motherwell. Um, in the in the early eighties. Um, so we were one of the you know the first you know people to arrive in Motherwell in the early eighties. Um, I stayed a few months with my uh, my aunt, right? My uh, my my father's sister. Um, at the time, she had a shop. And um, I mean, there was no electricity uh, back in Kasi those days, yeah. but they had a generator, right? Yeah. And yeah, um, yeah. They I remember we used to watch TV, <laughs> yeah, the yeah. whole night, yeah. yeah. So they had a generator, they had a shop, you know, they had a baki, you know, so, you know, so subconsciously I was really, uh, you know, um, taking in this. Uh, but then I went back to my mom's, right? So I stayed with my mom, um, you know, and my stepdad and um, eventually also moved to stay with my grandmother and that is where i stayed most of my of my youth with my grandmother um and uh, i think that's where the entrepreneurial bug actually really got me um um you know you were talking about the about the this issue of entrepreneurs you know that there's a lot of people as Kula Nabo, you know, who've done stuff that we never really saw them as entrepreneurs. But now that we are older and we understand, you know, what entrepreneurship is, you get to realize that these people are actually entrepreneurs. Um, you know, my grandmother, you know, was working as a domestic worker and um, grew up, you know, my, my grandmother, my mother were not educated, you know, they were domestic workers. But my grandmother, she had to stop working due to ill health. And, uh, you know, one guy, uh, you know, you know, something in Yan and she, and then, you know, she went home, she, life had to continue happening, right? So what she did, you know, um, we were lucky enough that our home was, uh, you know, at an intersection, like a corner. And right opposite us, there was a shop, right? But the shop was not selling things like fruits and veg and, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah. So what my grand did, she took the money that she got and um, you know got one of my uncles to build we, we call it a stand right um you know in front you went to the uh, 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 farmer's market you know bought uh, fruits vegetables and started selling right uh, i mean she sold everything you can think of uh, fruits vegetable uh, your sweets chocolates you know i remember i think i was around 12 or something when i started actually going to go and buy the stuff for her and um, so I was involved, you know, in this whole, in this whole thing, you know, watching subconsciously what was happening. And um, by the age of 15, I started my first business. At age 15, I was a photographer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, yes. So, uh, you know, I literally begged, you know, my mom to buy me this camera. Eventually she did. And, um, you know, um, you know, this guy used to look very nice and clean, you know, and he was a photographer. He seemed to be making some money. And so I got drawn into that. And um, so we started. Uh, but it was a few months, you know, I mean, we were young with my partner, you know, things didn't go well. We had to go separate ways. Uh, but I continued, you know, hustling, you know. So, but, you know, really the, the bug of entrepreneurship, you know, I got it from my grandmother. Because, I mean, she would even buy uh, old clothes, right? Uh, uh, go down, buy old clothes. Back in the day, there was no shop, right? There was no pep, there was no shopping mall. So, so um, second-hand clothes were actually good business back then. So she would buy these clothes and she would sell. And I remember there was one thing that... Uh, and I used to get teased a lot because of this, right? Because she would put like a, like a, um, a blanket right in front of the house yeah. and put all these clothes, you know, with prices, you know. And uh, so they used to say, ah, oh, Claire, you know, oh, Claire, you know. So, yeah. So, and then apart from that, there's something else that I used to get teased a lot that she used to sell. I mean, Eka, see, we have dogs, we have cats, you know, and uh, there was a lot of intakumba, you know. Yeah. So she used to get this... Um, it's like, uh, you know, the, the color was like champagne color. She used to buy this medicine. I'll call it medicine. And, um, and this thing, you know, you mix it with water. You put it in your blankets. It kills the, you know, in Takumba. Yeah. So, and then, you know, she would put a board there, write it herself, put a board and say, yes, I'll in Takumba. You know? <laughs> yeah. But now when you read that in, in Corsa, you know, it, 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 
it can be read as ears and end up meaning it's coming it's coming yeah you know yeah. so so you know my you know my guys used to tease me with that ah yes you know <laughs> yeah. that's what you guys are selling you know yeah so but you know through the process i learned about entrepreneurship and it was a um it was an incredible you know life yes i never really had you know it easy uh, i used to cry to get sneakers it, it used to be you know a struggle to to get stuff but um you know, I learned a lot about entrepreneurship through my grandmother. And this is you being a teenager, Scala? So, uh, primary school, I went to the normal township schools, Ekasi, and then uh, up until uh, 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 my senior primary. For high school, this is, the, this is what happened. So, um, I did not live with my dad, right, my biological father. And uh, my father, compared to where I was with my family, my mom and my grandmother, you know, he was okay, right? Um, he was working, was a shop steward, and uh, he was staying, stay, staying on the nicer suburb, you know, in still a car as on the nicer side, um, while, whilst, you know, we're staying on the shack. <laughs> yeah. So, now, and then this guy, you know, we were never close, but he said to, to my mom, he wants to take me to, because at the time, you know, uh, people were going to multiracial schools now, you know. So I, I guess there was a lot of pressure for parents, you know, that I now my, my kid is going to Lawson Brown High School, you know. So and then this guy wanted to take me to a white high school. My mom said, I don't trust this dude. Uh, this will be my problem. You know, he will pay maybe one month, two months for you, you know, a transport cost and then he will disappear. And, uh, you know, I, I guess my mom was wise in that way because that's exactly what happened. So my mom decided not to take me to a white school. But took me to a school where, you know, there were colors, Indians. It was a predominantly Indian school in an Indian area. But there were, you know, also colors. There were, you know, also, you know, uh, kids from the townships, you know. At least, basically, you know, to school. So, yeah. and uh, so that was fun. So, but that's where I went in high school. And uh, uh, the story with my high schooling is actually quite interesting. You know, growing up at Kasi, um, you know, being surrounded by a lot of things that is happening at cars. There's a lot of good, there's a lot of bad at cars, you know. And uh, when you don't have role models and mentors, it's easy for you to be drawn, you know, into the bad because you realize that there's a lot of respect, you know, um, accorded by Amanya Machita, maybe some ladies, you know, um, to guys who are actually doing bad. So as a result, you'll find yourself being drawn, you know, to that kind of lifestyle. So. You know, in my high school, uh, I chose uh, when we had to choose subjects, you know, at standard uh, eight. I chose home economics, uh, PEG. I chose typing. I chose biology and geography. When I tell people, they laugh. And laugh. I mean, what were you thinking? So for me, <laughs> my, my thinking was, you know what? This seems to be the easy way out. I don't like school, right? So I went there and uh, so I started, you know, plotting along, you know, uh, not really. I was never, ever throughout my schooling career in the top 10 or even the top half of the class always in the bottom half of the class i, I always say the same thing even me like i believe i was i believe i'm who i am because of hard work yeah i've never been like an a student or an intelligent person but i always hung around those guys mm. and i also just i was just always a hard worker so i would always outperform a mm. lot of people and i guess hard work sometimes makes up for I don't want to say less talent that you have because we all are gifted in different ways. Yeah, yeah. But hard work will get you somewhere somehow. True, that's true. I always use this this saying. I always say, hard work will always be talent when talent doesn't hustle. Chisa. That's true. <laughs> yeah, that's powerful. That's powerful. So I plotted along throughout my high school career, and uh, I actually eventually failed on the trick uh, because at the time, you know, I was drinking. I didn't really care whether I was coming or going. Up until, you know, I got a wake up call when I failed on my trick. I was like, hey, all my friends, you know, that we used to make trouble with the school. Now they've all gone their different ways, you know, and now I have to face my reality. You know, I'm back at Kasi, you know, and with nothing to do and no direction. And, um, you know, and I started, you know, soul searching and uh, an event happened and, uh, you know, which caused me to see life very differently and then i started you know wanting to go back to school but then this time around you know i went to six high schools in motherwell wanting to improve my metric none of them could accept me because of the combination of the subjects and i did not do 
is it Tosa is a home language. So I had English and Afrikaans. And uh, so the only way they could take me is if I go back to standard nine. And I was like, yo, I'm late, guys. You know, my, my, my peers are actually in tertiary right now. So um, I was, you know, almost depressed until my mom introduced me to a lady who used to work for one of the colleges. And um, this lady asked me to go and see her, so I went. She told me about the, the N route, right? Technical college, N1, N2, N3. And that being the equivalent of metric when you combine it with your, um, your metric uh, languages. So I was excited and luckily for me, staying with my grand, the library was like, you know, not even 300 kilometers away. So, uh, sorry, 300 meters away. <laughs> so um, I would wake up every day, go to the library, you know, what can I do? So I found that I could do electrical engineering, which had the, the end stream, mechanical and civil. Fell in love with civil, um, you know, being construction. And, um, and that's where my journey began. You know, went to technical high school, uh, technical college. Uh, and there I did my N1, N2, N3. Now here's a story, which, you know, uh, a lot of people find interesting is that, like I said, from primary all the way to high school, never ever was I in the top half of the class. But when I got to tertiary, because I understood that I'm late, I've wasted my time, I needed to, you know, I, I had no time to, to waste, you know, I could hardly even go to, uh, you know, college, you know, there was no money, um, you know, I got a bursary, <laughs> so for my, for my N2. But what happened was, my N1, N2, N3, I was always in the top five. When I went to do my first year, second year, third year, I was always in the top five because there was a change of mindset. But even there, you know, I went to tertiary with a plan. The plan was, I'm going to work for five years, gather capital, fix my home, you know, make sure that my granny is taken care of. She's got a nicer place to live in, you know, fix, you know, fix stuff. And then, you know, then start, uh, you know, my own business. And that was the plan, you know, graduated, you know, started working ish into my first day of work i was like no man this is not what i really really want to do because uh, work is tough you know i always feel when we see people graduating and uh, i always feel pity for some of them because we we get to have a, a wake-up call when we actually get to work and we realize that it's not this uh, uh <laughs> it's not the picture that we had in mind right the workplace can be one of the most exciting places it can also be one of the most toxic places you know um, um you know in america they say on mondays you know the people who get heart attacks the the rate increases by 35 percent on a monday because people have to go to a building they hate work with people they don't really like do maybe even do work they don't even enjoy so and for me i decided you know what let me quit you know so i quit started hustling so this guy hated school this guy <laughs> didn't even love work. So how's this guy going to become a family man and build a family? Like, just imagine your aunt or my old work. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, so the thing is, my, my mom was very cognizant of the fact that I can be very stubborn when I want to do something, right? So if I say I'm going to do something, I'm, I'm going to do it. So she never really had a problem. She always trusted me okay. to make the right judgment. Yeah. Um, and uh, because she knew that my dad, he was also an entrepreneur, you know, my dad's family, in fact, they were all entrepreneurs, you know, um, Sparsa shops here and there, you know. Um, so she had this thing in her mind that, you know, he's entrepreneurial because his family is entrepreneurial. Mm. So she, was, she never, she actually encouraged me. So when I left and uh, went to, started working, uh, you know, I... Uh, I became a labor-only subcontractor. A labor-only subcontractor? In construction. Ish. That was a job and a half, right? So what happened was someone gets a tender. This guy doesn't know how to build. Maybe he doesn't even have a team. He's going to get people like us who knows construction. We're going to bring our team. He will give us a rate. He's going to buy the material, give us a rate. But the rate, you'll find that, you know, there's only so much that comes to you, the rest goes to the laborers because there's a set amount, you know, that, you know, that you can pay them. So, and, um, you know, did that thing for a few months. Then I was like, no, this is not working. I need to find something else. And a friend of mine, um, you know, mentor, brother, you know, um, Colin Fibiga introduced me to real estate. And I started selling properties for a company called Remax. Oh, I know Remax, yeah. Yeah, I knocked it out of the park. I mean, my first few months, you know, I was doing well. 
Then I was like, no man, I'm making so much money here. So imagine if I start my own business. And one of the reasons why I loved real estate was the fact that, you know, 2007 in my second year, I came across the book, Rich and Poor Dad. Yeah. Um, Think like a billionaire by Donald Trump. You know, that sort of like got me to understand that if I want to build wealth and I always wanted to be wealthy, you know, um, there was never a doubt in my mind that I'm going to be wealthy one day. I don't know how, I don't know when, but I'm going to. So I started learning, you know, about that and following people who were wealthy, you know. And, and sorry to disturb you guys, that's how you got to be. Like even if I'm about to wipe all, now I'm, we're not saying be arrogant, but you, there's just some things that you got to know, some things that you got to continuously affirm to yourself. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not meaning blind. Do you know what I mean? Like, you, because what happens is your subconscious mind takes in all of those messages that you say to yourself on a consistent basis. And the subconscious mind cannot figure next year from last year or the day of the week or whatever. It takes whatever it keeps hearing from your own mouth as truth. And yeah. it keeps embedding it into yeah. your head. At some point, you end up actually, it ends up believing that you actually are that which you say you are. And then somehow the universe, as some people would call it, but yeah. brings everything that you want um, at a flame. But you obviously have to work towards it, right? So I love what you say. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, if you were to, to, to see any of the guys I was with in tertiary, they will all tell you that this guy, we thought he was crazy. We thought we are Boniswa, you know, we are Jela. Because I would always tell them, you know, guys, I'm going to be a millionaire. I don't know when, but I'm going to be a millionaire. <laughs> I right? used to say this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I used to even say, good chance, me like, so my name, you a pie, I'm a face. Yeah. Guys would also sometimes make fun of you. Yeah. And sure. others would say, hey, I'm but now, and don't like, you got sure. now, you know what I mean? Sure, sure, sure. And um, that's exactly what happened. Um, so, I even wrote it down, you know, I said, uh, you know, by the year 2017, you know, I'll be 35 years old and I want to have made my first million. Uh, this man is dropping gems today, guys. You already just said, write it down. Because when you write it down, it your, your subconscious mind memorizes it. Write it down. It's very important for you to write down those goals. If you've got posters or pictures on your phone or whatever, put all of the material things that you'd love to attain and see them on a daily basis on your in your room, on the wall or something. So I also love that gem that you just dropped. People take for granted such a simple thing like writing down their goals. Yeah, yeah. So, and even, you know, you shouldn't even be afraid of ridicule. Right? People say, ah, we are Boniswa. We are staying in a shack. You know, you know, when it's raining, you know, there's a there's a leak right on your bed. That was me, you know. But even in those circumstances, I said I'm going to be a millionaire, right? And um, and I wrote it down in 2007. And I said, 10 years from now, I'm actually going to have. I want to have made my first million. And uh, when I was in real estate, you know, selling properties, you know, I was doing okay. But the business was actually the the more the the, the more you do well in real estate, is the you know the cost also increases accordingly. Right, so you'll find that you know if you want to make three hundred thousand rand, you're gonna have to spend so much, right? So you know you, it's always that. Then I started looking for other alternatives because you know if I see something is not gonna work, and I look at people who have done this for thirty years, forty years, and look at where they are, look at the limitations, then I'm like, okay, so what's the alternative? Because the goal is the same, right? I want to achieve this lifestyle. This is the kind of family I want to have. This is what I want my kids to actually experience, you know, but the, you know, the way there can vary along the way, right? I mean, I started construction, nothing to do with technology, but today I'm talking cryptocurrencies, right? Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's what you're saying, you know, people call it the universe, you know, I say God, you know, will direct, you know, uh, um, your ways. In fact, one of my favorite scriptures says, you know, the steps of the righteous are ordered of the Lord, you know, I never knew today I'll be sitting here you know but uh, you know god always knew so and um, so yeah and uh, so in, in real estate you know i had my own office and uh ekas you know believed in this Ekasi economy you know and uh, you know i had one of the this, this is where Ekasi, eastern cape yeah eastern cape you know i had one of the best offices and um, you know i was the first one to introduce you know this thing of of car branding you know wrap the entire car you know, um, so, you know, you know, it was, it was good and exciting. And, um, but then I was like, no man, you know, there's limitations here. Right. And, um, 
then I started looking at alternatives. So whilst looking for alternatives, I came across IFA. You know, I'm one of those people that don't really care what people think in the sense that if I think something is going to work for me, it's going to take me somewhere. I don't really think about what are people going to say before I make an action. So according to IFA, and uh, people were surprised and thought that you have your own office, you are selling properties, you are in the, you're in the business, yet you are, you know, promoting IFA. What's the story there? So, and for me, it was like, I want to make extra income. IFA was paying monthly, real estate income is like this. So I was like, I wanted something that's actually going to give me passive income. And I thought the business was actually going to give me that. In the midst of that, I met, I met a few, you know, um, individuals excited about life, you know, entrepreneurs, you know, who were also dreamers. And uh, we sort of like formed a bond. Uh, I remember one of them um, invited me to a, a, you know, to a conference, a wealth conference. And in this conference, they were talking about Bitcoin. Um, they were talking about property. They were talking about real estate. They were talking about Forex. This is in 2015. 20 okay. So 2015, went there. I was really excited about this Bitcoin story, even though I didn't know much. This is when I was starting MoFi, 2015. So and so then, this is when you started crypto. Yo, and then when I joined you six years later, <laughs> I'm late, but guys, we're never late. To yeah. tell you the truth, with the cryptocurrency yeah. knowledge, it's still early days. Yeah. And what I preach and what he preaches as well, what I like about him is we preach education. We preach you going to attain as much knowledge uh, as far as anything that has to do with whatever you're investing in as possible. So even in crypto, I'm still new. I'm a student. He's been in it for like half a decade now, but he's like still a student. He's still learning all the time, interacting with other crypto enthusiasts, sharing knowledge all the time, doing these types of interviews to try and spread as much knowledge as possible. Because, um, but in ultimately you make the final decision because it's your life, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, so one of the things that really intrigued me, I, I consider myself to be very curious when it comes to wealth, right? I, I you know, I'm a, I study, right? I study, you talk about, you know, trust, you talk about, I study wealth, right? So, so one of the things that got me curious is that in this conference, they say, hands up, anyone who has Bitcoin, or they ever head of Bitcoin, a few hands went up, you know, hands up who has Bitcoin, a few black hands went up, I'm like, hey, you know, and I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ah, I need to know this thing, you know? Yeah. So, and then I left the conference thinking, you know what, I'm going to do some research on this. I remember, you know, we gave each other task, you know, when are you going to study gold? You will study Bitcoin, you know, yeah. this one will do property, <laughs> yeah. you know, and um, and that's how it went. So that's how my journey began with uh, with Bitcoin. So, so when I started studying, obviously my first few, this is the thing, right? All I knew about Bitcoin the first time was there's money to be made. So when I went on the internet, especially at the time, there was not real information. So when I went to the internet looking for what is this Bitcoin? How do I get involved? All I saw were opportunities promising me heaven on earth. How I'm going to make money in Bitcoin. So and, and obviously I would test, you know, I would get some returns. I could withdraw, put more money. You know, it's, it's like this, this platform, the, the, you know, the scam platforms, right? So they play on your greed, right? So I put more money. Hey, put me there. I made money. Put more money. And then boom, it's gone. For like three or four opportunities, you know, something like that happened where, you know, uh, the platform just went. So I was like, no, man. Why would a person go through all this trouble to create this wonderful looking website and convincing website, do videos only to steal people's Bitcoin? If there's nothing, you know, greater behind this Bitcoin story. Then, as I started to search deeper and not really look for ways to make money, but seek to understand what is Bitcoin, why does it exist, what problem is it here to solve, and how well is it doing in solving that problem, how big is that problem. Once I got to the depth of that and understood that, I was like, holy moly, this is a big deal. So, and, uh, you know, a few months after that, uh, in fact, January 2017, I started promoting and educating about Bitcoin on a full-term basis. I've never looked back. You know, um, this thing literally changed my life like night and day. If I'm interested in cryptocurrencies, just like a whole lot of other young people are out there, even older people, I've been hearing about scams and whatever. I don't know who to trust, what to do. How do I start? What is the first step into me getting into cryptocurrency? Let's say I'm working at a call center somewhere. Mm. In Kola, maybe let's say 5,000. I'm interested about this cryptocurrency journey. Whenever they say there is a seminar, somewhere close to you 
talking about Bitcoin. Go, attend, learn as much as you can. Don't join, right? Don't don't join. You know, especially in the early stages, right? No matter how good the opportunity looks like, don't join anything, right? Because remember, Bitcoin is a currency. You don't have to join something for you to. You can just buy Bitcoins for 100 Rand, 500, 200 Rand on your own Luno account or Fox Wallet account, um, you know, and just, you know, um, um, you know, watch the price, but forget the price for one minute and actually focus on trying to understand what is Bitcoin. Um, there's some wonderful channels on YouTube that one can watch. Um, there's some there's a channel called Bitcoin 99. The guy does an excellent job to teach about what is Bitcoin, right? And uh, only when you understand what is bitcoin how it works you know having spent you know hours and hours on youtube learning um there's even great books right now on on uh, on our normal um you know bookshops um about bitcoin about cryptocurrencies get those books learn as much as you can port agada has a book buy the book you know learn about bitcoin as much as you can and once you do by the way i've got also a book coming up we'll talk about that later so nice <laughs> so so as you learn, then only you can look at, so now that I understand this thing, how do I make money with it? You know, because ultimately that's the goal for most of us, right? But you need to understand what is it, how it works, so that you can then identify opportunities around Bitcoin, because there are plenty, right? So that's the one thing, you know, educate yourself, educate yourself, you know, follow people who are, you know, in the space, you know, read what they post. You know, I was saying to other guys, you know, Twitter is, is famous and infamous, you know, for black Twitter, you know, that there's a lot of, you know, stuff happening there. And I said, you know, for me, I follow a lot of uh, programs, I mean, developers on Twitter. I follow a lot of projects on Twitter and I learned a lot about Bitcoin on Twitter. You know, even people just interact with themselves and arguing amongst themselves, you know, about what is the best scaling solution, solution for Bitcoin, you know. So reading through those comments, you know, I learned a lot about the technology behind Bitcoin, right? So, so there's another gem that he just dropped. A lot of us, a lot of the time, will be in there just for the trending stuff and the juicy stuff and the gossipy stuff and the entertaining stuff and Black Twitter and who's doing what and who's trending and who's criticizing whoever. But did you hear what he just said? He's, he used and he's still using similar platforms same place but his choice was to follow pages or, or, or accounts of people that are talking about things that is interested in things that can grow him things that are growing him things that are that are that are growing me right now as well with attaining this entire cryptocurrency knowledge i'm saying that so as to say it doesn't even have to be crypto if you're a hustler out there whatever it is that you're interested in the very same social media is no different from an institution out there that you can go to and learn. You literally can learn from that very same social media. The only difference is who are you following? Yeah. And what is most of the time, because you know how social media is, bro. Like you get in there for like, sometimes if so, let me just check out for like mm. just two minutes. You end up being there for an hour, bro. True. You've been on it for an hour. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So be wise and be cognizant of such things where I'd rather train my brain and train myself to rather neutral accounts and things that are around what I'm passionate about or what I want to know or what I want to learn or where my life is going. Because yeah. the algorithms of these social media platforms as well, they give you more of what you consume. That's so true. if what you consume is mostly gossip and entertainment, they'll give yeah. you more of that. Yeah. And without even you being aware, you don't even see financial news anymore, yeah. information. You don't even see politics or other things you are literally always just being exposed to mm. this fun and this entertainment and one day when you snap out of it it's flipping a year later or six months later what did i do last year what have i done in the past six months mm. i've literally been watching social media trends mm. and that's how much sometimes you can even go on your phone and see how much time you've spent True. or how much data you've used on each app mm. just go in a month at the end of the month Look at how much time or how much data you spent on Twitter, on Facebook, on TikTok, on YouTube. And there's nothing wrong about that. But the critical question you have to ask yourself as a hustler now mm. is with that I amount of time or that amount of data, what did I benefit? Mm. That's true. That's true. Um, and so, no kurumang papi. So, I basically disturb you when you're still telling me about some of the information or a lot of the information you learned it from ordinary platforms yeah. like YouTube and Twitter. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and and I still do. Same, um, same, yeah. 
I still do. I actually learned okay. most of my cryptocurrency knowledge from 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 YouTube and podcasts. Yeah, yeah. So it's quite interesting uh, because I mean, right now, I mean, uh, we're living in really interesting times. Um, I, I shared something on Twitter that yesterday or this morning. Um, the president of El Salvador and the president of Turkey, you know, talking about Bitcoin, you know, you know where this thing is going and how can Turkey position itself, you know, El Salvador has done. So uh, I think it's only a matter of time where the whole world is actually going to move into blockchain. If you, you follow things like the World Economic Forum, you follow things like, uh, you know, the World Bank, you follow, um, you know, things like the Federal Reserve Bank in the U.S., South African Reserve Bank in Right now, this is what people don't know. The South African Reserve Bank is working on what is called an E-Rand. So the Rand doesn't know it is going to change. You know, China has done it. Uh, many other countries are actually doing it. Nigeria has done it in Naira. So the world is going on blockchain. The best thing we can do is to learn this thing as soon as possible and find a way to position ourselves. Because, I mean, let's think about it. You know, people who have become rich over the last 10, 20, 30 years. It's simply people who identify the trend, position themselves on the right side of that particular trend, right? Um, whether it be it investing in social media, people like Abu Kerivi, you know, um, buying social media stock, you know, um, investing into our Netflix, understanding where this thing is going in the next few years, you know, people understanding that there is this consciousness now about, um, you know, this carbon neutral world, you know, people investing into companies like Tesla, you know, so all those trends, those mega trends, we have to position ourselves on the right side of that of those mega trends. So right now, I've chosen fintech, you know, because the world is actually moving in that direction where, you know, the world of finance, as you know it, is being disrupted by technology. You know what they call fintech, right? Um, I mean, if you if you think about it right now, you think what Uber has done to the to the to the meter taxi, you know, system. And, um, you know, more and more things like that are moving into the financial system right now. And um, at this stage, it's open game for everyone to position themselves rightly. But the thing is, you have to spend time following people who are doing these things, you know, learning from them. You know, what are they saying? What are they talking about? You know, what problem are they identifying with the traditional financial system? And what solutions are actually being worked on, you know, to disrupt the normal, um, the traditional financial system? You know that uh, um, I, I thought uh, cryptocurrency was like Forex in the beginning before I came in. Now that I'm learning it, I'm in it, I've been in it for about seven months now. I'm starting to learn and understand that there is more opportunities than just buying coins or just trading cryptocurrencies or buying and selling of coins or holding coins. There's a whole other new world of ways in how so many people can create wealth even those who are not really interested in creating wealth but who just want to make money and make a living yeah. or invest some beautiful things on the blockchain technology for the future of their children there's space for everyone actually there's a whole world yeah i, I think at some point there was the internet when it first came out there was that era by the way for my 2000 there was a, 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 the internet before <laughs> social media because i know some of you guys think social media is the internet sure you you're still not entirely wrong social media is built on the internet network or technology so there was the internet which you can call the foundation things like about social media and and other things were built on the um the web network so what is happening right now we are moving into a space that they call the web 3 right yep. the web 3 is basically what all the tech geeks right now the coders, the engineers are currently building the future of the internet right now on top of the blockchain technology. For instance, the, us, the other day, you and I had a, a, a crypto live spaces on Twitter. We're talking about um, some exciting things that are coming and some things that are busy happening on the blockchain technology. You made an example about, for instance, it's going to affect politics at some point. Some people are like, how though? Mm. And you even spoke, good to know there will be a possibility for people to vote from their cell phones or from their computers in the future. Yeah. There will be ways in how contracts will be stored transparently on the blockchain networks for the future. So there's basically a whole new world that is currently being built on the Web3. Mm. And as you were saying, 
some people who came in earlier when the internet was mushrooming and growing mm. and the social media was still new like and all these different apps and all these silicon valley companies a lot of people came in and they invested yeah. and a lot of those people are now multi-millionaires yeah. if not billionaires a yeah. few of them right yeah. so now we have an opportunity to invest in something that is going to become huge in the future and that opportunity is cryptocurrencies yeah for sure um, you know, the interesting thing is that your book is what? Billionaire Under Construction, right? Yeah. And at the time, you probably didn't even know about crypto when you wrote the book. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah. Right? And um, uh, the Web3, the cryptocurrency space, blockchain technology is actually going to create a lot of billionaires. You know, someone was actually even saying that you know, the, the world's first trillionaire will probably come from crypto, right? Um, so here is my fear. My fear is that if, if people don't learn about this early enough, you're going to find a, a, a child growing up a gas, you know, and, uh, you know, going to varsity, you know, spending four years and the entire family, probably the, being the first one, like myself, to go to varsity from, you know, from, from their family. Everybody looking at and thinking and hoping that, you know, salvation is going to come to our home, at least our own, you know, will get to graduate and, you know, and at least when it comes to hunger, it will be done with, right? And this child goes and studies for a course. They graduate, but they study for a course that today is actually being rendered obsolete. They're studying for an industry that is on its way out, right? And uh, so that's my biggest fear right mm. now, because if you look at, let's, there's so many, um, you know, careers that this technology is actually going to kill. Let's talk about the legal profession right um you know the legal profession is mainly there to draft contract right and also when there's dispute they can resolve the dispute right now blockchain is doing that in a far better more transparent way more cost effective way than what the legal profession can do does this mean that there won't be lawyers tomorrow no what it simply means is that you know there's going to be less and less demand for people coming into that profession because of this blockchain technology right and uh, if you think of people like accountants right uh, back in the day there were so many clerks you know then you get your ca's and so forth but if you look at it right now i mean accountants in accounting is actually being simplified through technology right um, right now you can um, you know through an api you know your accounting software can read stuff from your bank statement and actually prepare financials working from your bank statement without anybody being involved right all via software and then your accountant simply look at it and they work it out you know and they say yes these numbers are okay or maybe we need to adjust here and there but the technology is there what does that mean it means the demand for that particular profession is also going to decrease right so our 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 you know young people coming from a need to look at these things and position themselves like i said on the right side of these trends that are happening right now because whatever we are seeing right now 10 years from now is going to be amplified many times over so so my challenge for everyone is uh, you know let's look at what is happening right let's understand web you know web 3.0 right let's understand you know the history of these things where it is right now when and where it's possibly going so um there's a whole new world that is being built today i mean i love property but here's the thing right i'm building a property portfolio you know and um, but now i'm sitting on the crossroad you know where you know w w what will it mean in the next 20 years to come because right now people are buying property on the metaverse digital property you know you're in the music industry, right? People are doing music concerts on the metaverse. And guess what? Because of that, they can have millions of people from all, all over the world, you know, attending that particular conference on the metaverse. So these are the changes that are happening where we need to position ourselves and make sure that we become part and parcel of this. Otherwise, you know, uh, uh, you know we're going to be in trouble. I love what you're saying. I love how you're spreading the information, you know, because I love music. I started a record label as, as, a, as a 21 year old, <coughs> excuse me, I love radio, I've gone on to start radio stations, you know, I, I love giving and, and helping out and I started a, a non-profit organization. When I love something, I, I want to participate not just in the forefront or just being a talent in it or being a worker, but I also would like to participate in the business side of it. Sure. As much as you... you you love cryptocurrency. I love cryptocurrency. I'm still new in it. 
I'm sure as an entrepreneur, your mindset says, how do I, as, as you were saying, that people should learn and position themselves. Hello, guys. <laughs> um, people should learn and position themselves. It's exactly what you did and it's working for you. But an entrepreneur understands the, the importance of governance. An entrepreneur understands the importance of teamwork. Mm. An entrepreneur understands the importance of bringing in other skill sets through people who acquire or people who possess those skills that he doesn't have. Because ultimately, an entrepreneur always wants to maximize the opportunity that they're seeing, and they understand that they can maximize it if they partner or they come together with other people. Is there a company that maybe you are planning to start? Which which um. Which platform are you on in this cryptocurrency space? Or you're just an individual who's just enthusiastic about it? Or do you have any plans of maybe starting a school to educate people? Or do you have a platform where people can learn or can access some cryptocurrency opportunities? Even if it's things that you might not be, maybe you're planning now, you're not ready to share right now. Mm. But I'm sure there might be one or two things or, or places that you can um, refer some of our audiences out there. Because why am I saying that? Every time when I talk about crypto, people always flood me. They're like, mm. where do we learn? What are NFTs? How do I mint an NFT? How do I buy an NFT? What is the metaverse? How do, how do, can I access a Bitcoin course from you? Because mm. we trust you. We know you. Other people mm. we don't trust. We don't know. But how do you? And I'm like, ish. Yeah. So now as an entrepreneur, I'm already walking on this journey to interact with people like you, other people, mm. so as to see where i can position myself in this space but to sort of build or belong to some sort of a mm. company or an institution or a platform sure. that can be beneficial not only to us as my business partners or myself mm. but more especially the community at large out there sure sure so i mean the last five years um i've been you know yes educating you know promoting you know uh, different companies you know people have gone to make money um but uh you know we decided you know what you know we've been pointing um you know and say there's the way you know bitcoin you know get involved and so forth uh we decided to actually you know be proactive and say you know what let's let's participate let's put our skin in the game let's put our reputation let's put our money you know let's put our resources our time and uh, and create a platform so we've created a company called severus uh severus you severus is an se V E R U S. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, and um, we've created this company called Severus. I've got, um, you know, three business partners, very brilliant, you know, people who are skilled in areas that I'm not, uh, you know, and we're building this company, um, you know, to be, you know, an Africa first, but, you know, that's going to operate in a global space, right? So the whole idea is that um, right now you have two parallels, right? You've got two freeways. You've got cryptocurrency, that is new. And then you've got your traditional finance, your, you know, um, that, that, that we all know, that we all grew up with. But now at some point, one has to build, you know, an off-ramp, you know, from, from uh, fiat into crypto and also from crypto into fiat. Because I don't think crypto is here to basically kill fiat. I think fiat is actually going to be here for a very long time. But it's just that, you know, there has to be a way for these two ways to basically interact. So if I'm on the, you know, um, uh, fiat currency lane, how do I get onto cryptocurrencies, right? So somebody has to build the bridge and that's what we are doing. So for people that want to, um, you know, buy Bitcoins, you hold Bitcoins, you know, we're building the first ever platform that's actually in short, right? Um, there's big names out there being advertised. Let me tell you this. If you've got money in those platforms and your account, your specific account get hacked, you know, that's it. You know, money's gone, right? Um, so that's where a little bit of danger with crypto is, right? Um, if you're not serious about your security, you can, you know, send, you know, something can happen. Because like I said, people are looking for this Bitcoin because they understand that this is digital gold, you know? So, um, you know, our platform is fully licensed, uh, fully, um, you know, in short, um, to make sure that, you know, if you um, we've got your crypto, it's 100% secured. Uh, most platforms have got two-factor authenticator or two-factor security. We've got four-factor security to make sure that, you know, you know, people's money are safe. Because, I mean, let's face it, we work hard for our money, right? So that's the platform we're creating. And not only that, this platform is going to be integrating, you know, everything that they do, um, you know, with the decentralized finance where, you know, you can earn far better, you know, yield on your money. 
um, on your cryptos and also people that want to do um, you know decentralized loan right or what they call DeFi loan let me explain what that means let's say i've got bitcoins right and i want to buy something for your lady uh, or maybe for myself or whatever the case is but I don't really like spending my bitcoins. I want to keep my bitcoins for long term because I know that, you know, price, the value will appreciate over time. What I can do is that I can take my bitcoins, put them on a DeFi loan as collateral, get maybe a stable coin that I can use to go and, you know, buy whatever that I need to buy. But then my bitcoins are safe there, right? And whenever I, I can, then I'll simply repay the loan and my bitcoins, I get my bitcoins back, right? So anything happens with the value Bitcoin going up or going down, yes, my crypto is affected as as the same way it would, you know, if it was in my in my in my wallet. So, um, so this is a platform that we're building. We want to help Africa adopt into cryptocurrencies, uh, you know, by making available all these different you know options. Uh, people are talking of NFTs, right? We are building an NFT marketplace. Uh, people who can buy their you know NFTs, hold their NFTs. So there's a lot that we're building to make sure that we create a conducive environment for people to actually understand cryptocurrencies, interact with cryptocurrencies in a very safe manner. And on top of that, we're also building an academy, right? Where we're going to teach people for free, um, you know, what cryptocurrencies are, what decentralized finances, you know, what is yield farming, what is, uh, what is staking. So all those different things people can learn on our academy for free. That is incredible, my brother. And, and uh, are you guys... Uh <clears throat> planning to launch anytime soon this year next year how many years should we wait so the the platform is live so oh, is it live now yes yes okay. um, we launched actually last year october um we launched under a name fox wallet um simply because of our background and what we've been doing with the community with the fox nation community uh but because we want to reach you know a much wider audience you know um you know we adopted this name severus and that's a very interesting story uh maybe let me share um what i did not know is that there was a guy from africa an african from north africa who became a roman emperor this guy conquered um, and founded the city of london black guy from africa we never knew that i didn't know that so once we got hold of the story we said no wait a minute you know this is exactly the story that needs to be told right of all these african heroes right people think africa is a dark continent you know full of poverty flies and whatever you know there's a lot of stuff happening in africa there's a lot of talent that is actually being exported to the world and we want to showcase that so that is why we're building an nft platform so people can you know create the, and mint their own nfts you know sell them to the world World, you know and um, and not only that this coming friday um we are launching our own limited edition nfts to commemorate this story of this guy called severus oh by the way this episode is coming out this friday awesome. Fr friday the 21st right yes 21st, 21st or 22nd friday this friday is going to be the 21st yeah so basically this episode is coming out at 12 o'clock in the afternoon this yeah. friday yeah so are you saying at nine o'clock we have an NFT masterclass on Friday. This morning. Today. So it happened this morning at 9? No, no, at 9 in the oh, evening. Oh, at 9 p.m. PM. Yeah, it's happening tomorrow. Okay, so as this episode is coming out now midday at 12, uh -huh. um, basically you're saying tonight at 9 p.m. Yes. Nine hours from now. Yes. At 9 p.m. Yes. You guys are? We're having a masterclass where we're going to be teaching for free what NFTs are. Obviously, you know, we're going to come with the whole background of cryptocurrencies and where we are right now with NFTs. Um, and we're also going to be launching our own limited edition, only 100 NFTs. And by the way, um, about 60% of these NFTs have actually been sold already. Um, you know, that we are going to be launching um, to commemorate. They're all built around Severus, you know, his story, you know, his victories. I don't even want to know what those NFTs are or how they look like. Can you please spare two for me? sure however the and and i know that they're not expensive however how much the, whatever the cost is i wanna i wanna spare two for myself sure it's actually not for myself because it's an investment it's for my children because it's things that i'm gonna hold i'm gonna just buy and keep them i'm a hodler a hodler is people who buy on crypto and they hold on to it for a long time so just please keep me two. sure yeah. we'll do we'll do so so that's the platform um you know severus and we're quite excited about it uh, you know that we've been able to partner with some incredible people and uh, you know so people must come to our masterclass to you know this tonight tonight let's say tonight how do I access the masterclass 
Um, there is a link uh, that's available. We've got a Telegram channel, uh, Fox, uh, Fox Wallet. That's the t Telegram channel now. So the platform, um, you can find us on Telegram, Severus. Um, you can also follow me on social media, you know, Twitter. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. Uh, you know, just search Lona Bofololo. And, um, you know, I always post about, you know, whatever we're going to be doing. So um, I will be posting. I've, I think I've already, it's already there on my social media platforms. You know, the, the, the link to register for a masterclass where you're going to learn about NFTs, you know, the story of Severus and why it inspires us, why it should inspire you and where we're actually going with this. So, yeah, we're quite excited about, um, you know, where this space is going. And I uh, think in the next, you know, three years, five years, ten years, you know, the world is going to be a very different place. And uh, we've decided that we don't want to see that future unfold, but we actually want to participate in creating that future. And by so doing, we want to inspire people, you know, coming from, you know, difficult backgrounds, coming from, you know, whatever various backgrounds people come from. But we want to inspire, you know, to inspire everyone and say, you know, if we can build a platform, you know, world class like this, you know, um, so can you guys, right? So there's a lot of stuff happening in the cryptocurrency space and we're really, really excited to be, you know, right at the forefront, educating people, showing people how they can get involved in this particular cryptocurrency space. So Severus, uh, look out for the channels. That is so dope. I'm quite excited because tonight at 9 p.m. they are going to be sharing information on what NFTs are. How can you mint NFTs? How can you access their portfolio of these exclusive 100 NFTs that they're launching tonight at 9 p.m.? But for me, more than anything, is the educational part of it. And I like the fact that it's for free. So if you are interested in knowing what NFTs are, all of you guys, are, it doesn't actually matter whatever industry you're in because this it will directly or indirectly affect you somehow in the future. You have to know what NFTs are. And the fact that it's for free, free education, free knowledge, I would like to encourage you to plug into their masterclass tonight. I'm going to put the link in the description. or the, Let me just say the link is already in the description of that masterclass. Just click on it. It'll take you directly there. Thank you so much, bro. Proud of you. Thanks a lot, man. I must say, you know, um, you, you really are inspiration, you know, to all of us. Um, you know, the work you're doing is really inspirational. You know, I'm so excited and humbled to be here. So thank you very much for having me. Um, you know, keep doing the work you're doing for South Africa. Nyabong, I'm faith. And I think, for me, I think I would like to repeat or, or return the sentiments. People who are usually successful or wealthy or who've done well for themselves, usually they don't want problems. Because, you, you know, people want all sorts of different things from them. Usually a lot of people just disappear and you mm -hmm. can't find them. It's difficult to reach out to them. And a lot of them never share the knowledge. Some of them want to share the knowledge, but sometimes they just don't like being in the public eye. Mm -hmm. I just want to appreciate you for being kind enough to always want to share information. Because that's how I am. And I think that's one of the things that attracts me to you. Because you're not selfish when it comes to information. And may your wealth be not even multiplied may 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 be quadruple applied <laughs> quadruple applied or whatever it is you know what i mean yeah upumelele mfeti ngoba think songs is shy spanish grand especially for into ana zethu nabo sister abasese bancane lelo kushini you know sure. yeah so this is the information that needs to go to them i know that you've just shared your um social media information we're going to put it in the descriptions as well uh is there a a um oh we've already spoken about the link where they can where can they, they can click into and go to the um to to the master class your company have you guys have a website already yet or let me just send people to your social media yeah. you'll keep sharing things as the days go sure yeah okay yeah so yeah we i'm i'm always sharing about stuff every single day you know um, inspirational challenging um so i obviously will, you know do share a lot about our company as well so people, yeah, can get a lot of information there on how they can get hold of us. People are doing great things with their lives out there, guys. The question is, what are you doing with yours? 
This has been The Hustler's Corner. Thank you very much for tuning in. I'll see you guys on the next episode. And I promise, guys, this year, I'm going to be dropping episodes every week. I know that I've neglected the podcast. I'll drop one episode in two months, whenever I like, because I'm very busy. But no more excuses this year. I'm going to dedicate my time to the podcast. There'll be a lot of content. There'll be interviews every week. And this is not the last time he's here. He's going to come back because we're going to literally, on this same platform, very soon we're going to be starting lives. We're going to start having people like him where we are content consistently sharing information and knowledge on a daily basis not once in a while so thank you very much for tuning in i love you guys this is the hustlers corner